Hello, happy Friday. I'm Gina Deleggi with Pacific Sotheby's and we are hopping on for our Friday Live, the GNT Live. Thomas McBee, who's also with Sotheby's, is gonna be hopping on in a minute to join us. And we have some fun stuff to talk to you about today. So thanks for joining. We are gonna be discussing the unlikely things to look for in your agent. Oh, there you are. Here, we're here in the morning. <laughs> I was like, Sorry, what's happening? I, I, Wi-Fi. I, That's I don't... okay. So for the people that were just hopping on, I was letting them know what we're talking about today. And it looks like we're both hands-free. So this is so nice for a change. Thank you. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I mean, it kind of comes down to like three main things, or actually maybe four. <laughs> when it comes to um, what to look for that's unlikely in an agent, you know, everyone thinks, okay, professional or, you know, has experience. But one thing that we got talking about earlier this week was just how they carry themselves, whether that's in how they talk, how they dress. It just amazes us sometimes. I know Thomas, you've seen this too. Like we meet up with an agent to show a property and you're like, are they really the agent? Just like yeah. how they're dressed. <laughs> I know it's crazy, isn't it? Super crazy. Yeah. So let me go ahead. No, it's okay. You go ahead. I was thinking. Of, I was just thinking of that whole thing we were talking about, like going to your doctor or your dentist. Like, I mean, not to. It's this is actually serious. But are you going to go to your dentist? Like he's in his boxers, like doing your teeth. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Probably question his competence. You know what I mean? It's not a really good sign. And no, at all. <laughs> and I'm a firm believer in how you do anything is how you do everything. And we kind of discussed that too. You know, these are some of the red flags or, you know, not necessarily, yeah, they are, I guess they are red flags. These are some of the things you need to pay attention to when you are interviewing an agent, you know, right. how they dress, how they carry themselves, how they conduct themselves. I mean, small things like that. Do they look yeah when they shake your hand do they give you a good good firm handshake are they polite are they well groomed i mean seriously well it's like even like being prepared for the appointment like you know knowing like how long that person's owned the property are they the second oh. owner or fourth owner like just questions that a buyer would have i feel like when an agent's not prepared and they just show up i don't know and then again there's so many people out there that just get their license to get their license yeah. And, you know, help a friend or help a family member. But to me, that's, that's a, kind of a disservice in a way. What do you think? Well, and yeah, the barrier to entry, unfortunately, is still pretty, and it's low. Yeah. So, you know, as far as getting your license and getting into the business, but are you actually in it? And as Gina said, like, what's your why? I think that's an important question to ask an agent when you're interviewing them is what's What's your, what's your why? Like, why do you do this? Mm -hmm. Do you do this because you're, you actually pride yourself in being a professional? You take this seriously? Or is this a hobby? Is this a weekend gig for you? Is this a, you know, just something you kind of do as a side hustle, but you're not really in it. You know what I mean? And right. a great quote I love that someone I really um, respect, I've heard talk a lot say is if you're 75% in, you're all out. So you want someone who's 110%, 150% in, you know what I mean? And you want to make sure that they are all in because if they're not, they really don't have your best interest at heart. You know what I mean? And, totally. and I mean, it kind of, do you want to touch on what we talked about? Kind of how that ties into the whole discount, you know, broker thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, to me, it's like, I'm super blessed in the way of having my mother as my business partner and mentor when I started 16 years ago, but putting that aside and just imagining myself starting as a fresh agent and knowing, okay, what company would I, would I go with to, you know, train me, teach me and, and really learn from the best. I'm sorry, but it wouldn't be any of these discount names that we're hearing out there because to me, I, you know, I'm like you, Thomas, like we are that hundred percent plus agent that just yeah. gives it our all. And that doesn't align with who I am. And 
you know, I think what people think about is like, okay, yes, it does come down to money for most people, buyers and sellers, whoever can get them, you know, the highest price when they sell the lowest price when they buy. But, you know, when they're constantly looking for these like kickbacks and like, oh, you can give me a chunk of your commission. Like, do you hear yourself what you're asking for? Like, you're asking for somebody to work for less in all capacities, not just less monetarily, but how yeah. much are they going to care? They're not going to yeah. care. They're going to like, get your deal done and go on to the next one. You know, like, I just think there's so many things that encompass, you know, who that, and not to like, you know, bash anybody here. That's not why we're here, but just to really think about it and consider like when you are hiring an agent, like think about who they're representing. Think about, you know, their, their past clients and how satisfied those people are. Cause to people like you and I that are like in this full time, like we care so much about the end result for our clients. We want to make them so satisfied and happy that they're happy to refer us. And it's really about referability. So someone just said, let's do some loans. Yeah, Troy, let's do it, buddy. <laughs> We're gonna. Let's go. um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's my little rant yeah. for this Friday. You get what you pay for too. I mean, let's keep it real. You really, you get what you pay for. Yeah, and you do. As Gina and I were talking about, kind of the ironic thing about discounted fees, and it's it's sort of counterintuitive, is in reality, really what a lot of those people have is commission breadth because they're so desperate for the commission that they'll cut it and they'll do it for whatever. They don't they don't really take pride in what they do. And I'm not here trying to bash people. I'm just calling a spade a spade. I mean, here's the here's one too real quick, Thomas, that they don't think about. So let's say that that kickback as a buyer is, you know, for round number's sake, let's just say five grand, okay, which is a big number. But hey, we deal with big numbers in real estate. Let's just say it's five grand. You know, there's ways, even in this crazy market, agents can negotiate. And yes, there's multiple offers. That's one thing. And I'm not going to give away my secrets, at least not yet. But there's other aspects of the transaction that you can negotiate to maybe make up that difference or sweeten the deal in other ways for your client. And especially when it comes to sellers, they shouldn't even be thinking twice in this market because, hey, if I can't negotiate you 20 grand more plus, God, then what? you shouldn't even be hiring me. Like, yeah, it's just, I, I mean, don't know that. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. If that's not telling, I don't know what is. How, like, if that's, if you're, if you can't stand firm and negotiate on your own behalf for commission that you know you deserve because you're a pr true professional, you work hard, and you're 150% in it, then how can you really do that on your client's behalf? If you can't even do it on your own behalf. I, if If that's not indicative of someone that might not be great at negotiating and having your back and going to bat for you later on down the road when they're, when the inevitable problems do come up, then I don't know what is. Yeah. It's a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think you know, I just, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of like somebody that hasn't bought or sold in a long time. And I mean, I would think that this would be super informative and important for people to know. So and there's some people, that's oh, yeah. the, I mean, good. You're going to like, you're in like a buffet line. I mean, how do you even know what to, everyone's got a different, a different protocol they're offering, a different this, a different that, I'll do this, you know, and a lot of it is kind of smoke and mirrors. And then the whole, I mean, the whole discount thing, again, Gina, we got to, you guys, you got to ask people what their why is. Why are you? And most often, I think if they are discounting, like I said, because if they really cared about and took pride in the job and really cared about the clients, why do they need to discount it? They own well, the Yeah. Well, and th that's another thing, too. And they know they, des they deserve that money because they really have your back. But if, they, if they're in it, kind of just, they're not really all in it they feel the need to have to discount it to get the listing because all they care about is getting the commission. They don't care. Well, 
Well, not just that, but here's another point is especially when you go to sell is <clears throat> if an agent is so quick to drop their, you know, professional fee to make you happy, how hard do you think they're in, they're going to negotiate when you get offers one and two, how much money do you think they're really going to spend to advertise and market your listing? And I'm sorry, I know we are in a seller's market, but you still need the proper exposure. I don't yeah. care what kind of market you're in, you need it. And yeah. when agents are doing that right in terms of marketing their listings, like I know you and I, and we take listings, we're spending thousands of dollars up front. Oh. Do we want to? Yeah. Kind of, because we want to do a good job for our clients. I mean, of course, it's, you know, fees for these videographers and photographers are what they are, but it just, it's more than that. And I think, I think people just need to start asking questions instead of jumping into things and realizing, you know, your, your hunk of real estate is more than likely your biggest financial asset that you have. So don't risk it. Don't, don't just, you know, don't scam. say, you know what, this friend, this person's my buddy or she's my girlfriend. And you know, she just got her license. She's going to represent me. Like, really consider what you're about to do because, you know, this for, for some people, this is their retirement. Like, we've been talking to more and more couples lately who are recognizing the market we're in. And, you know, this is like the last bit of their little nest egg. So it's like, it's serious stuff. Totally. Thanks for joining, Chris, uh, Stacy. But, um, but anyway, I, I hope that was informative to everybody and... I pretty much uh, said everything I, I wanted to say on it. The main can... is Gina just, just left it. Ask questions, please. You're, there's a lot of stake here. You're not yeah. selling a hamburger, all right? <laughs> You're not buying a toothbrush. Yeah, and you don't, you don't want a $20 haircut either. If your dentist is in freaking a tracksuit, you probably should go to a new dentist. I'm sorry. Same thing. Be aware of these things. These are it, like these. These things are an indication. I don't know why I can't say indication right now. An indication <laughs> of the more important things. If they can't get the small things right, they cannot do the really important things when the inevitable problems do arise. Yep. it's gonna it's not gonna be pretty yeah so pay, well ask, find out what their why is and you know we're, we just want everyone to make prudent decisions here as gina said with likely your your largest asset yeah for sure so, well for everybody that jumped on um if there's a topic you want us to cover or you have questions on we'd be happy to discuss it in our future friday lives um so Thank you all for joining. I know Thomas yeah. appreciates it too. Thank you so much. We'll Every catch you next time. We can, huh? All right. We'll see you we'll later. We'll catch you next week.